Hi guys, it's Buster here, and it's time for Volume 12 of Buster's Book Reviews. And I think this one's going to be a lot better than the last one was, because I think we got a much better book here. In this one, we've got uh, we've got my fourth Dean Coon book, Coons book reviewed, and admittedly, as I go on forward, there's probably going to be a lot of Dean Coons ones, because he's the main writer that I've read most, and you know, I've read a few by other authors, but he's the most, and i got a bunch out of the building, you know, that I've read before, and uh... Having to uh, uh, probably have to do a bunch of those, so it's gonna be a lot of Dean Koontz ones. Uh, but uh, in this one, we've got a good one. It's one of his. Uh, it's not really new, but it's newer. Uh, it's called Relentless. Now, well, I, it's been a long time since I read this book, and uh, I had to go back and. Uh, uh, read a little bit, do catch up a little bit, read a few scenes here and there, and before I just knew like the general plot, now I got a few details, so this wouldn't be too boring of a review. So, to get started, you got this writer, his name is Colin Greenwich, and they call him Cubby. He's got a wife named Pe Penny, uh, a son named Milo, and he's like a little genius. He's six years old, reads on a college level, and he's just like little Einstein, and, they got, and he's got a dog named Lassie. Well, his new book just came out. He's a best-selling writer, and his wife is a children's author. But he gets uh, uh, his new book called One O'Clock Jump comes out, and there, and it's great, and he's so happy. But then it gets reviewed by this renowned critic named Sherman Wax. Yeah, stupid name, huh? But uh, it, he just tears his book apart, talks about how crappy and horrible it is, and just absolutely decimates him. And, but his editor's like, don't respond to him. That would be a very bad move. You don't respond to him. You just ignore him. And besides, it's a good thing to get noticed no matter if it's bad or not. And his wife and everybody tells him to let it go. But for some reason, he just can't. So he finds out where Wax goes to lunch. Nobody hardly ever sees the dude. But he finds out where he goes to lunch. And they, he knows the place. So he goes to eat. And he waits for him to come in. And he sees him. And he's like this real hokey white haired dude and uh... And he's reading, eating some, uh, 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 he's reading while he eats and everything well so he just wanted to get a look at him you know he wasn't really going to confront him so he uh... then Milo says hey dad I gotta pee well, so he helps take Milo to the bathroom and uh... Their, their, the stall is like locked so they can't get in there and the, the urinal is too big for little Milo so well, he has to hold Milo up, Milo up while he's peeing in the urinal. And then Sherman Wax walks out of the stall and he's like, whoop! And he turns around with Milo and Milo pees at, pees at, the, at the critic. Yes, I know it's kind of kind of silly, but that's what happens. The editor, I mean, the critic like dances backward, missing him so he didn't get peed on. Then the guy steps forward. Watch his hands, just gives him a death stare, and right before he leaves, he looks at Cuppy and says one word, DOOM. And, uh, and, uh, that's when all the craziness starts to break loose. Because, um, then, uh, the, 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 uh, the next day, uh, or, or, I don't know if it was later that day or the next day, anyway, uh, Cubby's sitting there just reading a book of short stories, I think, and, uh, he looks up and he sees Wax walk right by his door to study. Like, what the heck? And he goes all around the house trying to find him. He keeps getting glimpses of him here and there, and then finally he sees him leave out the front door and get in a black Escalade and drive away. And he comes back in, and he smells something burning, and he goes to the stove, and the dude put his picture of his family in there and, uh, cooked it. And, uh, so that's kind of like a grim warning, you know? And then, one night, while they're sleeping, the power goes out, and he wakes up, he hears the voice of the dude, he goes around, and he gets tased! And then his wife wakes up, and the dude tases uh, her too, he tases her twice, tases Cubby like six times trying to electrocute him, and then everything goes back to normal. Well, as normal as it can be, I guess, after getting tased. But, uh, then, uh, uh, Cubby gets his phone call from this author, and he's like, a lot of people think I'm dead, but I'm not. And he's like, who are you? And he tells him who he is, and he remembers the guy. The guy said he was quitting writing, and he thought he had like a deadly disease or something. What the dude did was he faked his, I guess he faked his own death and went into hiding. 
and it turns out that this Sherman Wax dude is psychotic. He uh he killed his parents, he killed his cat, he killed his uh he killed his uh daughters, and he killed his wife. So he ain't got nobody. So he's warning Cody Cubby for the love of God, don't don't go go to don't don't confront him. But of course he already has anyway, you know, kind of. And he's like, oh God, you got to get out of there. You got to get out of there right now, right now. And so Cubby tells the kills the um. His wife, uh, Penny and Milo, they're like, we're getting out of here. We gotta go. And then he looks in the closet, in these, uh, to the, at the furnace. They got two furnaces. And they got, like, these cell phones attached to them. It's a bomb! It's, the place is about to blow. They get out there. They can't crank the car. Then finally they get it crunk. They go up. They get down the street a little piece. And then, boom! The whole house explodes. And it's just, you know, they don't have a home now. And the, the psychopath blew up their house. The jerk, and so now they don't know what to do because this guy isn't gonna stop, and that's the reason for the title, relentless, because this dude is relentless. And uh, so a friend that's doing like a development project, uh, uh, it's like apartments or something. Anyway, he lets them stay there for free, and they stay there and they think they're okay, but then one night, pew pew, high-powered bullet, rifle bullet starts piercing the piercing the windows and the idiots trying to kill Milo the little genius and uh, uh, the, uh, and he uh, but uh, they were they're able to like uh, get away and get like through the secret door and then get away from the place and get away again that's when they go to stay with his wife's parents now they're like these uh, these big bur these, they're like these big uh, doomsday preppers you know they live in a bunker I, if I remember right, I think her mom's like a really tall woman, like kind of like an Amazon woman, and her dad's real big and burly too. And uh, you know they got guns and supplies and everything all around. But eventually they get tired of hiding out. They're like, this is no life. They want to figure out what's going on. So then they go all through the rest of the book trying to figure out what happened to all these other authors that Wax has done this to. And it turns out he's not alone. He got other people. This is like some big like, cult thing, you know. But, um, there's a mystery to it. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. I just want to give you a general idea of what's going on, you know. But this was a very good book. It was very enjoyable, and it's got Dean Koontz's classic, classic humor in it. I mean, even just now, when I was re rereading a couple of little passages, I was chuckling at uh, a, uh, a few of the things, you know. The kid's funny. I mean, all the characters are interesting, you know. And they got a bad guy you really hate. You want to see him get it in the end. Trust me, you're going to hate him. And uh, that's why, like I said, it goes all through the book trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, and you got to read to find out what happens in the end. But, uh, uh, like I said, enjoyable characters. A very creative story. It's funny. And I think it'll leave you smiling and laughing a lot. And it'll have you shaking your fist, too, at the bad guy. And, uh, uh, uh I, I think, I think I have to give this book four stars. Uh, it's kind of like the way it was with Ashley Bell. Uh, it, it, it's a very good book, but it, it's, it's not quite up there with my favorite favorites. I only like to give five stars to my favorite favorites, you know. But very good book, four stars. And, uh, that'll, and, uh, I think that's about it that I need to do. But, uh, uh, if you like this video, uh, like it, subscribe to the channel, see more Buttered Book Reviews, get all of Chris's marketing news. You can follow Chris Snyder at ChrisSnyder83. And, uh, and, well, there's the phone I guess I gotta get. For right now, happy reading.